Hey everyone, how's it going? So if you guys didn't know, Hamination just released a new uh, music video that you guys should go watch before you watch this video. But anyways, I was actually able to help out with the video along with another animator named Annie. It was super fun working with the two of them to make this project. We started the process back in October and it was overall just super fun to work with everyone. For my case, I helped out in creating backgrounds for the video. And the video right here is just to kind of show you guys my process of making my backgrounds and uh, a little bit of the behind the scenes that went on when creating this project. Alright, and with all that said, you guys should go and watch the full music video and the animation first and then you know come back over here and you can watch a little bit of the behind the scenes i'm telling you there, there was a lot of work put into it so yeah all right and with that let's start breaking this thing down okay so now to get into this whole thing i created about 52 backgrounds total and this includes like the moving backgrounds and also the standstill so this whole project was pretty fun as a background artist bryson just kind of let me do my own thing so yeah he'd give me like a little assignment like maybe do something like a forest and he'd give me like a little reference sketch here and there if I needed it and then I just kind of go on my own and and then I kind of just take that and turn it into my own kind of creation but this video was just kind of like all over the place because it had to do with a lot of different topics so I really got to explore a lot of new uh, backgrounds and like new things to create which honestly that kept me pretty busy because I was always doing something different the next day which really kept the whole job you know pretty interesting on the way you know one day i'd be doing um a forest or just some like outside landscape to the next day i'd be doing a whole entire hogwarts castle so it definitely was very you know just different but that's what made the whole process super fun so now when it comes to the color aspects of my background i usually like to stick around three or four colors used within my backgrounds i think sometimes having too much color can get a little busy for the eye and with my backgrounds, I make them simple enough to where they're not busy, and I make them busy enough to where they're not, like, too simple. I kind of fall, like, right in between that medium. So, like, when, within this forest drawing, I'm going to be using this as somewhat of a reference throughout the video. So, I use, like, the brown and the green as, like, the main tone of the drawing, but then I add in, like, those little hints of yellow and pinkish, like, red and purple to kind of just make some things pop and to, you know, just to bring it all together. And another thing with color is that before I even start the piece or before I even start the coloring process, I always think if I want a more like warm tone environment or if I want something that is maybe colder or more like chill. So I think this background right here shows a perfect example of the more cooler type of background. I use a more cooler based color such as green and blue. I probably spend too much time on this, but I really like to focus on the aspect of colors and how they blend with one another and how they look. So sometimes it can take me hours to figure out if I even like that color palette or like what I'm doing with the colors. You know, there's times I, I was like, I don't really like this that much. And I just, I just restarted the whole entire coloring process and wanted to find something that was, you know, nice to the eye and something that was easy to look at. All right, so now I'm going to go into the fact of the complicated backgrounds towards the simpler type of backgrounds. So basically what I mean by this is like when you're working with an animation within backgrounds, I think, um, you know, some backgrounds can only last a second, if not even a second, where others can last 15, 20 seconds, even a minute, who knows. Depending on how long a background stays for, like within the frame, can really depend on how much effort you actually want to put into the background itself. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't put effort into like any of the backgrounds you do but when you have a background that only stays in for 0.5 seconds I don't think you want to make it a huge masterpiece so since this was like my first time ever working for another animator and doing backgrounds for like animation purposes other than my own I always wanted things to be like really nice and perfect where when I <laughs> when I started out I thought this was fine and you know I'd make my backgrounds a hundred percent effort but as the deadline started closing in, I realized that all this effort I'm, I'm putting into this one scene that only lasts for a second probably isn't worth it. I was putting in enough effort to how much time this background like actually was going to last in the video. So for example, you have this giant avatar uh, water temple and then you go from a nice little simple couch in a living room. And you can definitely see the contrast and detail from that ice temple. I mean the water temple all the way to this couch so this was definitely something I learned from the process of making these backgrounds and you know and you really have to take time in for consideration and that not every background has to be a complete Mona Lisa if that makes sense and honestly sometimes simple is the 
better way to go than complicated. Um, honestly, like this couch background really didn't need much else than a couch and a nice little wall with a little uh, window frame in the back. So when making a background for something that's going to be animated, you definitely have to make the drawing that's going to, you know, work with the person that's doing the animation. So throughout the video, I was making these backgrounds for Annie and Bryson to animate over. And there were times that they needed like extended backgrounds that they could animate. Alright, so for example, here's like this curtain I had to draw um, for Annie to animate over. And if you guys, please go subscribe to Annie. She did a wonderful job on this video. And her animation was absolutely incredible to work with. So the background right here was used for the scene where Bryson had his hat and out jumped the ham into the air. And we knew that for this background, we needed the camera to pan upwards to follow the ham as it moved into the air. So we used a canvas size that was double the height of the original canvas resolution. And that gave us more um, like room to work with so we could pan the camera up and down. We also did this for other uh, backgrounds such as the hill extend. Um, this hill, we actually needed to make it move as Bryson was walking. So we had to make this background higher up and then we it allowed Annie to move the background down as Bryson was moving. And this brings me right into the next topic of smear backgrounds or moving backgrounds. So there's like a scene when Bryson throws the mic and it flies through like this little like brick wall that it flies by until he catches it on the other side. And during that whole movement as the microphone is passing through the brick, that's a huge smear frame. Um, I think it was built into just like four frames that I used. I just used four frames for that of just um, random just like little streaks of brown that helped with just a quick movement. And when you put it together in animation, it, it looks like just any other ordinary movement and there's nothing that looks weird about it. I mean, it, with smears, it, it's just a lot of like blurs and you don't have to overthink it too much. And I also did one uh, when he's shooting up into the air at the end, into the night sky. Um, as like the sky is moving behind them, that's just all smear frames going. I'm also going to be posting a lot of the backgrounds I did for Bryson on my Twitter. So if you want to head over there and give it a follow, at Naderbug underscore, I'd uh, seriously appreciate it first off. And if you want to just see more of what I did behind the scenes, then for sure and go check it out. And with that, I'm going to be wrapping up this uh, quick little behind the scenes video. And I hope you guys all enjoyed my little uh, rundown of like the process of like background creating with an animation and Hopefully it helps some of you guys that are interested in starting backgrounds or, you know, any of that type of stuff. Alright, and yeah, thank you so much Bryson again for letting me be a part of this. And if you guys have not watched the video yet, make sure to go do it. And make sure to go and subscribe to Annie who helped out with a lot of the animation within the video as well. And uh, yeah, with that, thank you guys so much for watching my video and welcome to everyone who is new from Bryson's channel. Alright everybody, hope you all enjoyed and have a good rest of your day. See ya.